What's going on guys? Today we're talking about the salary cap dramas and the possible NRL strike. I've been waiting for the NRL to come back for ages. Don't you dare strike on me now. So let's have a little look to see whether we think it's fair and um, if the players are asking too much or the NRL is being greedy. And I'd love to hear your opinion on this, guys. Are the players just being greedy here or should they get paid more? Um, and I'll give my two cents at the end. But first, let's just watch the news, um, art, not article, uh, video on this. It got posted. Then I'll go through the salary cap breakdown, which they've actually rejected. And um, we'll go from there. The NRL season could be in jeopardy with players prepared to go on strike. They're negotiating with rugby league officials over a new collective bargaining agreement. And it's not going well. Liam Tapper explains. Good afternoon. Well, the start of this year's NRL season is under threat as the latest battle between the players and the game intensifies. Players in the NRL are at loggerheads over the current pay deal that's on the table. The game raising the salary cap for the 2023 season to more than $12 million. Seven yeah, $12.1 million they raised it to and I've got the breakdown here and we'll go over that in a second. News understands the Players Association did not agree with the terms at the time. Yesterday, Cronulla Sharks players took their issue with the game to another level, refusing to take part in an official NRL photo shoot. The Dragons cancelling their own media event this morning, again over the game's inability to secure a pay deal. What we want as a playing group is the NRL to come to the table. What's Kurt Catewell on, you reckon? Be on five, six hundred? Be ready to negotiate. We're prepared to yeah, fight for what we think is fair. The firing negotiations have dragged on for more than a year. As a result, clubs and players have started their pre-season without a new collective bargaining agreement. And it threatens to spill out <coughs> the 2023 season. The season launch is an official NRL event, one that currently players would be boycotting. If this continues, it has the potential of football being delayed. The NRL have told... Don't delay the footy, man. Don't you dare. ...told Seven News that they continue to negotiate with the Players Association and look forward to the season kicking off as usual. All right, so what do you guys think about that? Do you, do you think the guys have been a bit greedy? So this was the offer that for the 2023 season and it sounds like they obviously wanted a bit higher. So it's, it's come up substantially. And, um, look, and this is really hard to sort of say whether it's fair or not because we don't really know how much you know what I mean like um, you know and the NRL itself is getting and how much a lot of um, you know advertising from Channel 9 and all this sort of there's a lot of moving pieces that go into play here but so it got raised to 12.1 million with the salary cap for the top 40 being 11.45 so it's only really 11.45 and um, with the development salary cap which I thought was amazing when I first saw this I actually thought this was all amazing I'd that's why I'm a bit like, oh, what are, the, what are the players going on about here? And this this is what I really loved as well, was the minimum was 120. I, remember, I did a video about this on TikTok not long ago, saying a lot of the players coming through when we were playing 8, 17, 18, 19, like getting 20, 30 grand. You know what I mean? I said Ben Hannett used to have to work at the fruit markets on Saturday morning at 5 a.m. because he had a family and he, you know, he was getting like 30 grand from the Broncos. He was a starting prop for the Broncos. Or sometimes started he was on the bench a bit as well but um pretty crazy so i actually said when i did my initial video on this when this came out and we thought this was the deal that i thought this was great because it really looked after the women for number one which the winner and salary cap here went up dramatically it looked after the developing players and it looked after the players that are on the bottom not getting much whereas at the top even though it did go up a bit because you're splitting it so many ways, there's not a huge amount of room here. So from what it sounds like, it's more the marquee players that are having a little bit of a sook here. So you can look at it two different ways. Now, what do I think? I think they should get more. I don't know whether they can get more, like whether the NRL's withholding money or not. Um, but I, like I've said, I've known players that have played into their 30s and I know players with CTE, I know players with motor neurons disease, I know players that are constantly popping pain pills for the rest of their life. And, you know, I think you should be compensated for that. And I understand why they should get more money. And I've always thought NRL players were massively underpaid. But then you flip it around the other side and you go, all right, so Kirk Catewell was just speaking then. Let's say he's on six, 700 and he's like, that's not enough, I want more. And then you've got guys living out of their cars who can't afford rent. You've got guys that with jobs that are living in the tent city at the RNA showgrounds in Brisbane who have jobs, normal dudes, but they just cannot make enough money to get by. 
So that it looks greedy from that from from those sort of people's standpoint. Standpoint. So it's hard, man. I'm I'm really on the fence here. I hear both sides like, shut up and play. I don't think that, but you know what I mean? Like, come on, guys, you're on a lot. Just play, you know, 600 grand to run with a footy is not bad. A lot of people would kill for that. And then I hear where they're coming from. You know, they're, they're putting their bodies on the line. They're training six days a week. They're elite at what they do. They're not really... The, the chances of getting a media deal after you finish with playing is slim, so you pretty much got to get as much money as you can now. So I, I hear both sides. But um, I really do hope it isn't over such a small amount too. I, I remember once, um, so back in the day I was playing, uh, not playing, um, I, I was driving a forklift and we're in this big union. We worked at a massive company we're driving and um, our union was going into bat for us, trying to get us as much money as we could out of this thing. We're like, we'll do strikes, we'll do this, we'll do that. And they're like, um, they offered us an awesome pay rise, like 11% or something, or 8% or something like that. And they're like, we're going to reject this guys and we're going to go for 10 10 and I, I sit there and I worked it out and I'm like and they're striking over this and I'm like it's an extra 24 bucks a week who cares after tax you're probably getting 16 bucks and you know what I mean these guys were going at it over such a small amount of money so like you know let's say they put the salary cup up to 13 million does that really help like does that really help like you still got to split that extra million dollars a year amongst 30 people i mean it's not a huge amount of money when you're in the grand scheme of things like so i don't know i'm really i'm really torn with this one all i hope is they come to an agreement where everyone's happy and we start footy first week of march and i get to start gambling on it again <laughs> let me know what you think about this one guys if you're not already make sure you subscribe We've got plenty of these videos coming up thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one